In Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures, our Gananus, which means children in Aboriginal language, are everything. We all play a role in keeping our mob safe. On behalf of all staff at Blue Card Services, I'd like to begin by respectfully acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we are recording this podcast today, the Jagara and the Turrbal people, and pay my respect to Elders past, present and emerging. We extend a special welcome to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples listening to this podcast. Hello everyone, I'm Jess, a proud Bidjaw woman, and I work in community information team at Blue Card Services. Today I'd like to introduce our deadly guest, Neil. Neil is from Northern Rivers Rugby League Club. He has a few questions about the terms restricted person and restricted employment. G'day Jess, thanks for having me today. A few of the fellows on the committee at the footy club that I'm at have been talking about the recent changes with blue cards. You know those ones that came in a little while ago, about 18 months or so? They're talking about restricted persons and restricted employment. I'm only new onto the committee and so I just want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing and that we're doing the right thing. Yes, of course. So in the blue card system, there is some people who can rely on an exemption and don't need a blue card to work with kids. For example, a teenager who is volunteering with kids at a local footy club or a parent who is volunteering at their kid's school. Yeah, we, we also know that people who work with kids less than seven days in a year don't need a blue card either. Like when we get a guest speaker in at the club or when we have an interstate coach come to give our team some coaching tips. Yeah, that's right. But it's important to remember that some people are not allowed to apply for a blue card to work with kids because of their police information. There is also people who cannot apply for a blue card because they have been issued with a negative notice by the blue card mob. Yeah, I heard your podcast about people who've been charged with certain offences. They can never apply for a blue card. And there's also some people who've been given a negative notice, I think, and they have to wait two years before they can apply to have it cancelled. Is that right? Yeah, that's right, Neil. So a restricted person refers to someone who has been convicted of what's called a disqualifying offence, such as rape, or who has been issued a negative notice or had their blue card suspended or been charged with the disqualifying offence and the matter hasn't been finalised in court. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, that, that makes sense. But what does this restricted employment mean? Can you give me an explanation? Well, the term restricted employment refers to situations where exemptions apply. There are five exemptions. This includes, number one, a volunteer parent. Number two, a volunteer under the age of 18 years. Three, a person who works with children for less than seven days in a calendar year. Four, a person living with a disability who is employed at a place where the person also receives disability services or NDIS support services. And number five, a secondary school student on work experience who carries out disability related work under the direct supervision of a person who holds a blue card or an exemption card. So these are the areas where people are currently able to rely on an exemption and don't actually need a blue card to work with kids, right? So to be sure and to be clear, what I take from that is, let's say we had a volunteer who works for less than seven days a year. Like my example before with the coach that we get in from interstate, who might only come in once or twice a year, but if they're a restricted person, that means we can't rely on that exemption. And similarly, if say we had a volunteer parent who was a restricted person does that mean we can't allow them to take on that volunteering role because they can't rely on on that exemption is that is that what that means yeah Yeah. that's right the changes make an offense for a restricted person to work in restricted employment which means they cannot rely on this exemption anymore so how does a person know if they're a restricted person well the blue card mob have lots of information about restricted persons and restricted employment on their web page this includes information about how to make a record that you have asked someone relying on an exemption if they are a restricted person before allowing them to start. Plus, if a person is not sure, they can always call us and have a yarn. Okay, so this this restricted person and this restricted employment, these terms, that could apply to the people who work or volunteer at my footy club. 
So what can we do to make sure we're doing the right thing? That's a good question because there are penalties for organisations and people who don't do the right thing. Yeah, well, of course, we want to keep our kids safe. So do you guys have some tips for us? Because we wouldn't necessarily know who is a restricted person. Yeah, organisations cannot allow a person to style or continue working or volunteering if they know the person is a restricted person. So a club should be telling people who volunteer and work at the club to read about the restricted person, restricted employment changes. We have a fact sheet you can give out to your volunteers and workers and there are posters you can put up around the place. We also have an online video which tells people all about restricted persons and restricted employment and what to do if they become a restricted person. We also have information for when new people come to your club and want to help out. You can give them this information so they know all about it. Well that sounds exactly what I think I've got to do. I think I've got to get onto the website and print out some of those things so that we can make sure people are really aware of stuff. And I've got to say I've found some of the info on the website really useful in the past so I'll, I'll definitely be doing that. If we have any more questions can we give you a call? Of course you can. Do we just call Blue Card Services or is there anyone we can ask for? Organisations can email me at yarn at bluecard.qld.gov.au or give me a call on 0732 Okay, cool. Excellent, Jess. Thanks for that and thanks for all this info. It's been good. Thank you for yarning with me today, Neil. I certainly have enjoyed our time together and a big thank you to those who are listening. If you need any help with anything Blue Card, have a look at our deadly resources on the Blue Card website and feel free to give us a call. Until next time, let's keep our gunner news safe and stay deadly.